You know, again, going back to, uh, we talked a little bit earlier about Avatar 2's coming out. Of course, James Cameron, he's the king of the world, right? Five films in history have made over $2 billion. Two of them are James Cameron's. Actually, two of the top three box office films of all time are James Cameron films. Number one, Avatar, and number three, Titanic. Titanic, which was the number one film in the world for a while when it came out, until ultimately Avatar overtook it. So James Cameron, for a long time, had the number one and number two films all time. And then Avengers Endgame's up there in the number two spot there now. But the one that really made James Gunn, or James Gunn, James Cameron, James Cameron, by the way, good Canadian kid, uh, king of the world was his Titanic film. And of course, Leonardo DiCaprio, who is in Titanic, was already a big name amongst the teens, right? He was on the cover of every teen magazine when that movie came out, all that kind of stuff. So he was already a star. But Titanic is that film that put him on the map for everybody. Yeah, he was the big teen heartthrob at the time, but Titanic made him a global superstar to everyone. Well, an interesting story has come out now where it looks like Leonardo DiCaprio nearly didn't get this job. James Cameron wanted him for the job and they were talking about the job. And then James Cameron said, I want you to read or in a set, in essence, do an audition, right? I want you to read for this. I want you to sit down. I want to get a camera. We want to do a screen test. That's what they mean when they say, we want you to read for a role. And they wanted him to read uh, opposite of Kate Winslet, who had already been cast in the, in the role and apparently Leonardo DiCaprio said, I don't read, like I don't audition. And James Cameron said, well then have a nice day because you're not in my movie. Anyway, let me, I want to read, this is a really interesting story to me. Um, and by the way, I'm not on anybody's side in this. I just think this is a really, really interesting story about what almost happened. So bear with me here as I read uh, what we've got in the Variety article here. Okay. So, so hang in there with me as I, as I read this. So, it says the following in here. So Leonardo DiCaprio's Titanic audition process wasn't smooth sailing, according, according to director James Cameron. The Oscar-winning filmmaker participated in a career retrospective video interview for GQ magazine and recalled how Leonardo DiCaprio originally refused to read for the part of Jack opposite Kate Winslet during a screen test. Cameron told the young actor, you're going to read or you're not going to get the part. I love that in and of itself, but the story itself is actually pretty interesting. So let's keep going on here with the story because the story about how all this happened is pretty neat. Uh, there was a meeting with Leo and then there was a screen test with Leo, Cameron said. The meeting was funny because I am sitting in my conference room waiting to meet an actor and I look around and all the women in the entire office are in the meeting. They all wanted to meet Leo. It was hysterical. DiCaprio charmed everyone in his first meeting but the screen test was a bit more contentious. By the time Cameron set up the screen test for DiCaprio, Winslet was already locked to play the role of Rose. So this is where it gets interesting. He came back a couple of days later and I had the camera set up to record the video, Cameron said. He didn't know he was going to test. He thought it was just another meeting to meet Kate Winslet. So I said, okay, we're just gonna go into the next room and we'll run some lines and I'll video it. And he said, you mean I'm reading? I said, yeah. He said, oh, I don't read. I shook his hand and I said, thanks for coming by. Cameron was ready to turn away DiCaprio right then and there, but the actor came back to him and said, wait, 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 wait. If I don't read, I don't get the part just like that? Cameron responded, oh yeah, come on. This is a giant movie that is going to take two years of my life and you'll be gone doing five other things while I'm doing post-production. So I'm not going to fuck it up by making the wrong decision in casting. So you're going to read or you're not going to get the part. Okay, so we'll come back to this in a second. Let me, let me, let me start with this. Can I just, number one, it is not, it is not completely unusual that actors of a certain status make a rule for themselves that they don't audition. And, and, and I get it. Like, for instance, one of my favorite actors in the world, Russell Crowe, is one of those actors. Russell Crowe does not audition. He does not read. His attitude is, I've been in enough things. You know what I bring to the table. You know exactly what kind of actor I am. 
And if you think I'm right for the role, offer me the role. If you're not sure if I'm right for the role or not, go get somebody else. And you know what? I have no problem with that. Because when you're one of these actors of that level, then you're getting things thrown at you all the time. You're getting offers for this, that, and the other thing, and all this kind of stuff. And probably one of the things you don't want to work in your schedule is the, the hassle of going and auditioning. Now, for everybody else, that's something you got to do. So I don't blame DiCaprio, who at the time, being the number one teen heartthrob in the world, at the time was probably getting tons of offers thrown at him for everything under the sun. And James Cameron just went, you know what? It's just another role to you. But to me, it's a couple of years of my life. And you're going to be on set for a couple of months, and then you're going to go off and do other movies. This is something I'll be working on for years. So I want to 100% make sure I've got the right person for it. So if you don't want to read, that's fine. There's the door, kid. I, I love that James Cameron did that. Even though I don't blame Leonardo DiCaprio at all for having that rule with himself like some other actors have. That's fine. So this is where... This is where something happens that I really, really respect Leonardo DiCaprio for. So after he says, okay, so you're going to read or you're not going to get the part. So then he continues on. And he says this. So he comes in and he's like every ounce of his entire being is just so negative right up until I said action. And then he turned into Jack, Cameron concluded. Kate just lit up and they played the scene Dark clouds had opened up and a ray of sun came down and lit up Jack. And I'm like, all right, here's the guy. I'm going to tell you why I love this. This is why I love this so much here. So apparently what, what Cameron is saying is that once he told DiCaprio, I don't care if you have a rule you don't read. If you don't read for this, you're out. DiCaprio, I guess, was pissed. And the way James Cameron says it here says like every ounce of his entire being was just so negative. So he didn't like it. He wasn't happy. But here's where I respect the hell out of DiCaprio. As soon as Cameron said action, DiCaprio took all that garbage, all that baggage, all of that negativity, all of that diva-ish, diva-ishness. Is that a word? Diva-ishness? I don't know. But the moment James Cameron said action, DiCaprio was a pro. It didn't matter that he didn't like that he had to read. It didn't matter that he felt he was being inconvenienced. It didn't matter that maybe even DiCaprio maybe felt he was being disrespected, whatever. None of that mattered to DiCaprio. The moment the director said action, and he said, and then Cameron says that DiCaprio was then just a pro. All that negativity went away and he did his job. He read the role and him and Kate lit it up. And the result of that was that Titanic became the number one film of all time. So I got to tell you, I hear personally, I hear the story and I have a lot of respect for both of them as a result of the story. I love the fact that James Cameron stuck to his guns. I love the fact that James Cameron was like, no, this is my movie and I'm going to hundred percent make sure that this movie is every bit as good as it can possibly be. And that means even if you're some big star teen actor that doesn't like to read, if you don't read, you're out. And I respect that. I think that's great. But I also respect Leonardo DiCaprio for going, fine, you know what, I'm unhappy. And then the moment the work is supposed to start, he took all of his own baggage, he took all of his unhappiness, he took all of his devotishness, and he put it aside and he did the job. I respect the hell out of people who do that. I do. I, I respect the hell out of people who do that. I'll tell you a little story. Um, you know, when I was back in the days when I was running AMC and Collider and stuff like that, you know, and we had a fairly big staff for a while. Clearly not everybody, imagine this, clearly not everybody loved every decision or idea I came up with or every decision that I made. Go figure, right? Because, uh, you, know, you know, sometimes I don't come up with the gold. That's all right. So here's the thing that I always told people that, that worked with me. I always said this, let's make a deal with each other. You can come into my office privately at any time and 
tell me that you don't like a decision I made, or you don't like an idea I have, or you don't like a direction I'm doing and, and lay it out for me. Like just lay it out for me and go at it. I said, you can, this is our deal. You can come to me anytime and tell me that stuff. And then here's the other side of the deal. The other side of the deal is if I think you make sense, I'll change my mind, which happened quite a lot, actually. You know, Christian and Dennis and other guys like that were often able to make me change my mind and do something different. That's what having good people around you does for you. But I said, the other part of the deal is this. If I hear you out and I you don't win me over and I still think my way of doing things is the best way in this particular situation, then you agree that when you walk out my office door, you are going to get behind that idea and do everything you can to make it work and get behind it as if it's your own idea, right? So it's a two-way street. You can come to me and tell me everything you think I'm doing wrong. And sometimes I'll go, oh my God, you're right. This, You're right. Your idea is better. But if I don't do that, then you agree to get fully behind it and do your best to make it work. And that's part of the reason why guys like Christian and myself work so well together, because Christian is a super smart guy. So he would come to me sometimes and say, hey, John, I think you need to rethink this because of this, this, and this. And I go, oh, you know what? You're right. Uh, you're right. Or sometimes I go, you know what, Christian? No, I, I still think this is the best course of action. And then Christian would go, all right, then let's make this work. And I love that because that's what DiCaprio just did in this situation. In this situation, DiCaprio was like, I don't, I shouldn't have to read. I'm already this level of a star. I, I don't want to do this, but I want the role. Okay, fine. Let's do your stupid test read. And then as soon as he says action, he's like, boom, he does the job. He gets into it and he makes it work. And so, yeah, while it's, it does sound, I know a little diva like, to hear an actor say, oh, I don't want to read for a role or anything. I, I, you got to understand, there are other actors who do that and it does work for them. But I just kind of respect the way this all played out. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you make of this story of James Cameron nearly not giving the role to Leonardo DiCaprio because DiCaprio didn't want to read? Uh, whatever you guys think about it, jump down to the comment section below and let me know your thoughts.